Hi, everybody. Today I'm going to talk about improving debuggability using GDB's Python API, which is pretty awesome. So um, we try to encourage people to use modern C++ libraries. Typically, they have a lot of template instantiations in them. If you come from a C background, you can sometimes have a bad time. When you, because often you try to, to learn these things by how the library works and try to figure out your code through using the debugger. Um, generally, because the library internals get exposed when you're in the debugger, um, templated libraries have complex in implementations and you just kind of see all of it. Perhaps the, this uh, Twitter user probably expressed it best. So they're very unhappy. Actually, I've heard this kind of complaint a lot. So let's take an example and, and see what kind of things people might be dealing with here. The example I chose is just we have a vector of a vector of strings. Um, we're going to try to sort the, those, those vectors um, based on their first two elements. This, this is, uh, we're using std sort and supplying a predicate which has a bug. So um, uh, let's see, how might this look? Okay, here I am in GDB. Um, I'm going to, I set a breakpoint in main, I'm going to run, and I'm going to just go down to where I'm calling std sort. And I'm a naive um, programmer in C++, so I'm just going to try to step into this and, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's bad. Okay, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to set a breakpoint in my actual code and just continue to it. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to set a breakpoint at line 32, which is the beginning of my uh, lambda, and I'm just going to continue to there. Okay, that's great. Good. So far, so good. All right, now how did I get here? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, this is really bad. Okay, so we, we need to provide a solution maybe for these people just to help them, you know, get over the hump and um, get used to this kind of, of, of debugging. So we want to use the Python API, which is really powerful in GDB. First thing we want to do is make single stepping a little bit easier. We only want to stop and use our code. We want to just kind of like pretend that all of that templated library code is just one function. We just blast right through it down to something that they wrote, right? Unfortunately, GDB lacks the semantic information necessary to, um, to help us figure out um, where we need to go to. But there is a Python package that you could use in the Python um, API and GDB that can give you this sort of semantic information. That, of course, is libclang. So with libclang, we can find the current statement that we're stopped at in GDB. And uh, in that statement, we can identify all the calls that are made, um, any objects that are supplied to that, to that call that have uh, methods, lambdas that are supplied. We can use maybe a regex to look at namespaces and decide which of those things are library code and which aren't, and then use GDB to set temporary breakpoints on what remains, continue, delete the breakpoints. We have effectively a, a nice single step for users. So how can we make this happen? GDB can give us the current file and line number. We can then go over to libclang, take that information, and get a cursor into the AST. And then we can interrogate that cursor and find out information about what's going on in the AST and what's happening semantically at the point we are currently stopped in GDB. Um, once, once we've used that information to come up with our, our, our list of files and lines that we might want to set breakpoints at, um, we can use this. Um, these GDB uh, methods to create breakpoints, to execute the continue, and then to delete the breakpoints afterwards. Now, the backtrace is still really ugly, as you saw, but we want to be able to clean that up. Uh, we want to be able to, to make that, um, there, well, there's a couple of things we can use for that purpose, and those are frame decorators and frame filters. Frame decorators allow us to take each frame in the backtrace and, and modify it in any way we want. This particular piece of code takes the name of the function in the back uh, for, for each frame in the backtrace and does a rot 13 on it. Uh, a frame filter can be used to omit uh, frames in the backtrace that you're not interested in or to create a hierarchy of frames too. Um, this one just takes out anything that's in boost. So it's not a terribly useful frame filter here. And then we wrap that in the decorator, so we have a ROT13 boost omitted stack trace. What we really want to do um, is have a filter that removes all but, every one, all, all but one of every sequence of library frames. So you just get that initial call. Then we want a decorator that cleans up some of the ugly type names. It uses aliases instead of the fully expanded you know, template spew. And finally, steps only into user code. So let's see. Let's see what that might look like. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to delete that breakpoint that I manually added. I'm going to run again. Yes. I'm going to go back down to that std sort. 
And now I'm going to go use my library code. Um, uh oh. <laughs> and I'm going to use my custom command. And it blasted us directly there. I'm going to use backtrace. Yeah, and then I'm going to show you the backtrace has taken out all of the all of the the stuff inside of sort. All you see is the call to sort main and your lambda. Thank you. <laughs>